right, let's go ahead and get started for questions for Coach. Uh, congratulations, Coach. Was having Joseph Martinez in this game tonight the difference in getting a win here and what happened against Philadelphia? <laughs> It's a tricky question, though, because I feel like, yes, Joseph is massively important for how we play, not just what he can produce uh, as a footballer, but also as a leader, as someone that people rely on taking the balls in uh, the ball in tough areas and, and, and yelling at his teammates and show a little bit how we need to attack. So I would say it's very important, but uh, I would like to say that even when Joseph is out of in international, when Joseph is out of the lineup, I would like also the team to win. And I prepare the team, no matter who's in, who's out, to win. So in some senses, yes, it's very important, but uh, I would prefer if no matter who's on the field, we, we still have a solid performance. Did you ever consider taking him out uh, tonight, knowing that he got Montreal on Saturday? And there are still games to be played. Yeah, I had that in my mind. Uh, actually, I asked Joseph. I have a good good communication with him, so he knows that at any moment he feels something, I, I can pull him out. I mean, I'm, I'm here to help Joseph to, to get fit and to perform at a high level all the time. So uh, I decided at the end it was a good moment because uh, he was tired and also he can receive all the love from the fans in that special moment for him. Coach, it felt like during the week that Joseph may not play or, or may play sparingly leading up to this match. You mentioned that he may manage his minutes, um, but he almost played nine. Was was that a result of was he failing it, or was the team not finding perhaps the creation, the chance creation that you were expecting? Well, <laughs> it's a very good question. I think that uh, when I said we need to manage the minutes of Joseph, I wasn't talking just about this game. I was talking in general. Yes, this game, if things were going probably better at halftime and we have a, a, a better score line, maybe I can take Joseph off just to, to take some legs out of him. But uh, as I said to you guys, Joseph is a warrior. He's someone that is going to do everything for this club and he's going to play in one leg if he has to. I know Joseph and he has that big heart. So it's my job to make sure that he plays with both legs so he's more efficient. But, uh, but I think uh, he, he, he's going to do whatever, whatever he needs to do to, to make sure the team wins. And what was the decision behind replacing Mar Marcelino? Roseto. Yes. What was the decision making there? And then, what were you happy with Luis Araujo tonight? Was, was was he was he hurting? Was he not fit? Was he not sharp? Well, I would start. I would start to say that assessing individual performances, you have to take that in context of the game. So, in the context of the game, I probably put um, Marcelino. I'm reflecting on on maybe I put him in a bad position because he had to start the sequences from a deeper position, and obviously. Uh, he was trying to do more on the attacking half. At times, that disorganized a little bit the team because he was in higher positions and then Barco and Luis Araujo were not receiving the ball in those spaces. So I had to make an adjustment just based on I needed more solid pair of center mids to attract the opposition and then create a space for Luis Araujo and Barco. It wasn't like I feel like Marcelino played poorly. He played normal Marcelino, but tactically I needed a, more of a second center mid. Uh, and then if I was pleased with Araujo again, the same. It was a tough position for him because uh, he couldn't find really the pockets of the space that I always want to. But I felt that he was in tune in the game. He was trying. He was trying very hard. He was tracking back, which I like. So I'm happy with him in, in the effort line. And I know the football and the connections is going to come with time. I told you, he's still adapting a little bit to the league, knowing different type of players uh, and, and playing with his teammates. So I'm sure Araujo is progressing well. I'm happy with his progression. And, and hopefully he can impact the game in the offensive side a bit more the next game. It's all the, the team, even without the penalty, created nearly two expected goals during the game. And so I'm just kind of curious how, how happy you were, especially with, in the second half, the way the team was just able to keep applying the pressure to the point where eventually you got, you know, Miami kind of broke there. Yeah, based on, on the stats that we have, we have uh, expected goals of 2.71 against 0.76. So I felt that, yes, we created uh, enough chances to probably impact the game earlier. 
but the games are like that. And I think Miami did a very good job. He was very solid. I was impressed with their build up from goal kicks. He, he did a very good job in the first couple minutes. They surprised us a little bit. And then their transitions were very difficult. When, when, when Iguain was dropping in between the lines, he was causing us problems. And so it wasn't an easy game to play. But I, the part that I liked was when they were in a solid lower block, we were able to unlock certain things based on good possession and movement of the ball, especially, as you said, in the second half. A couple transitions were also a good way to, to impact, but uh, probably it was destiny that it had to be Joseph with a penalty to score his 100th goal and then, and then help us to win as a team. Coach, kind of on that note, was the team aware that Joseph was sitting on number 99 and was it part of the game plan? It looked like at times they were almost like forcing it to give Joseph the ball. And um, yeah, or was it just a natural, a natural part of the game? Yeah, I, I feel that the team knew about the 99th goal and then uh, it was close and and probably they were trying to help his his friend i mean joseph is a beloved uh player in the team in the locker room so i'm sure some of them they were trying to for him to score the goal but also i would say that joseph a normal Joseph in any other game, he also attracts the, 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 the balls in those areas because he's a center forward. So we are always trying to, to, to put good balls for Joseph because he's a superb finisher. So I would say that yes, a little bit of both probably is normal, but today maybe they try a little bit more for him. Yeah, Coach, you talked about Miami being in a low block. I'm curious uh, to know uh, what adjustments, if any, uh, did you make in, at halftime to, to try and crack that? Well, I think I just said that about the two center meets was for me the issue because uh, Sosa was doing a great job at distributing the ball, but at times it was only longer passes and it was very easy for them to shift over. And I wanted to penetrate a little bit more through the middle. And the way to do it, it was bringing a second center meet. I told Rosero to stay just next to, to Santi and then, and then having two players there to attract them a little bit more and pull them out pulled Matuidi out and the other center mid out, so then Barco had more space. Uh, then we moved to a back four when I felt that they were leaving only one player up front and then we had three center backs for one player. So I tried to adjust on that one and there were a few adjustments that the players applied and understood and, and credit to them, they, they, they adjust within the game. I'm also curious, how did you feel about the team's movement off the ball in the first half especially? Probably it's a little bit of those tactics. I was happy with the rhythm. I think we were playing fast and we were playing and moving, playing and moving. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't say that it was poor. I would say that it was difficult, challenging based on the defensive shape that Inter Miami put in, in, into the game. But I felt that the second half was a bit better. The second half, the ball movement, the, 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 the winning duels on the offensive half was much better and we impacted a bit more the, the game. Is there a cake back there for Joseph? That seems to be the trend. <laughs> well, I don't know about the cake, but we, we are all very happy for Joseph. Okay. We're all very happy. Anything else news? Coach, I'm just curious, what was the first thing you said to Joseph after you scored that goal? I say congrats and I'm very proud of, of you. I mean, uh, I don't want to go emotional, but uh, I was very, very happy for him. Daniel, go ahead. Thank you so much. Continuando, felicidades por la victoria, coach. Una preguntita: ¿es café o es agua? Es café y muy bueno. Y es muy bueno. Continuando, como decía todo, por lo del cake, ¿no? Te voy a traer un café guatemalteco muy delicioso de mi pueblo con guaco. Ah, muchas gracias, muy amable. ¿Es mi percepción o es qué está pasando? Pero Luis Araujo, yo, en lo particular, lo he visto que ha bajado un poco su nivel. ¿Está Luis Araujo al 100% o, o está pasando por alguna, está tocado o algo está pasando con no, yo, yo difiero un poco. No creo que él esté bajando su nivel. Creo que está encontrando su nivel. Creo que la adaptación a la liga le ha sido, le ha sido pues, en algunos momentos buena. Creo que ha tenido momentos donde desequilibra bastante bien. Hoy el partido quizás no se prestaba mucho para sus cualidades en, en, en donde él hace esas, esos arranques con la pelota. Pero creo que poco a poco se va a ir encontrando. Hoy tuvo un par de jugadas donde parece que se encontró muy bien. Bueno, diría que más de un par, pero es, es un proceso. Yo todavía tengo muchísima confianza en lo que Luis puede, puede impactar en el equipo. Por supuesto que puede dar mucho más, pero es nuestro trabajo 
eh, como coaches y también el trabajo de sus compañeros empezar a encontrarlo en mejores áreas. ¿no? Eh, y estoy muy contento con la progresión que lleva y sobre todo que está también defendiendo, está aprendiendo que aquí hay que atacar y defender y, y está eh, haciendo carreras defensivas, está muy, muy eh, atento a esas situaciones y eso me gusta. Uh, el día de hoy se vio por algunos momentos un partido un poco eh, lento. Eh, quizás la primera parte no se vio eh, mucha emoción, mucho ataque de parte de la primera. Eso es porque han cambiado la estrategia un poco, quizás de mantener más el balón y no desperdiciar balones yendo al, al fondo. Y una segunda pregunta es: eh, ¿qué ha pasado con los mexicanos que están en, en el Atlanta de Braille que no vimos hoy a ninguno en la alineación? Sí. Um, uh, bueno, en cuanto a lo que fue lento, quizás yo difiero un poco. No creo que haya sido lento, creo que más bien faltó más, faltaron más carreras de, de ruptura, ¿no? Desmarques de ruptura a la espalda y lo cual de repente era muy ir de lado a lado, ir de lado a lado, moviendo la pelota rápido, pero, pero se veía lento por el tránsito. Faltó más carreras de desmarque a la espalda y creo que eso hubiera dado un poquito más de emociones y fue parte de lo que dijimos en el medio tiempo, que había que hacer más desmarques de ruptura a, a la última línea y creo que se vio una mejora. Después uh, de los dos mexicanos, bueno, uno está en un protocolo este, médico, eh, cubo, y el otro, eh, Jürgen, que trae una pequeña sobrecarga muscular, pero yo creo que va a estar bien, no sé si estos días será algo de día a día, ha estado entrenando y progresando mucho mejor con esa, se, se le puso un poco duro el, 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 el músculo. Pero, eh, 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 por el juego de hoy, eh, una pregunta, se dificultó un poco contra la ciudad del que en gira, y vienen dos juegos en gira, las próximas fechas son eh, fuera del Mercedes-Benz. ¿Cuál es la estrategia para que pues, no batalle tanto en gira como ya que se le da fácil en casa? En bueno, primero, nunca es fácil en casa o en visita, nunca es fácil. Y pues la estrategia es tratar de jugar de la misma manera que jugamos hoy. Yo creo que el otro día en Filadelfia fue un partido quizás para olvidar de esos que a veces pasan en los torneos. Me ha tocado muchas veces como jugador y como entrenador que el equipo viene bien, se viene mostrando muy bien, pero de repente damos un partido que no corresponde a lo que se viene mostrando. Lo bueno es que hoy se regresó y espero que esta tendencia continúe también para el partido de Montreal, que va a ser durísimo, pero creo que el equipo está preparado para hacer un buen juego. En, en su opinión, ¿no? si usted puede hablar de lo personal, ¿cuál ha sido, usted piensa, su, su sello hasta ahora del equipo, tanto táctico como lo personal? Eh, y, o sea, al principio, cuando, cuando usted llegó, yo creo que le hice la misma pregunta y pues, hablamos de táctica un poco, ya hay conceptos que estamos viendo, ¿cuál es el sello? Pues mira, Felipe, a veces me gustaría más que ustedes lo dijeran. Yo, yo leo mucho lo que ustedes dicen, hacen muy buenos análisis, tácticos y del equipo, me gustaría más que ustedes lo definan, yo, yo ya les dije un poco lo que busco, lo que me gusta, eh, espero que se refleje un poco de eso poco a poco más este, en cada partido, pero espero que ustedes, ustedes nos digan, estaré muy atento a sus, a sus reportajes y, y, y ya los leeré a ver, a ver si corresponde un poco con lo que pienso y ya te diré en una próxima ocasión. Gracias. Yeah. Thank you. Yes.